Welcome to this netcast worship service from Ansley United Church on February 28th. In the name of our Creator, welcome. First time visitor to our netcast or one who has been here many times, child or elder or in between, caregiver, caretaker, disciple, children of God, neighbors all, loved and loving. Welcome in the name of the Sovereign God. As we begin our worship, hear the prelude now as David plays. Come into God's presence. It is in God that we live and move and have our being. Come travel a Lenten journey, a journey together as a community of faith and also alone. Come hear Christ's call to love God with all your heart and all we are and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Come into God's presence and express our love. Let us pray. God of the smooth road, the rough places, and the wilderness paths, we thank you for giving us a safe space, for blessing all of creation. God of the hungry times, the difficult times, and all the times of our lives, we ask for your guidance, wisdom, and spirit in our worship, and in our work, and in our choices and in our lives. Amen. Let us now sing hymn number one from More Voices, Let Us Build a House, verse one, three, and five.
us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this king of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the king of glory. And from the New Testament, from Galatians, we read these verses from chapter 3. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. May God bless the reading of his word to us. And now we will have a special piece of music by David on the piano and Elaine Mitchell on the oboe. Thank you. 
Thank you, David and Elaine, for that playing of that beautiful piece of music, Morning Has Broken. It is truly one of my favorite songs. I heard it when I was a, just a teenager by Cat Stevens, and it stirred my heart then, and it means even more to me today. And so I am very personally grateful for it. Today's message is really not a message, but the thoughts are there on renegotiating race relations. Today, on our communion table, we have nine candles, a set of five purple candles, and then the four of red, white, yellow, and black. And I will be lighting each of them as I express some thoughts of their meeting to us in Lent. The five purple candles represent the five Sundays in Lent. The 40 days of Lent are a traditional time of lament, of repentance, and of seeking reconciliation and the mending of relationships. To lament means to express sorrow or grief. To lament is to weep, to sob, to wail in the face of injustice. To lament is to mourn what has been lost and to express regret for wrongdoing. We could, as some might suggest, think of the five relationships with God, self, family, neighbors, and creation over the five Sundays and light one candle per week. But I have chosen a different th set of themes and choose to do this one lighting ceremony instead today. As we light the purple candles to represent the journey of lament, we will make this a Lenten season, a lament for how we as individuals might have failed to act with respect, dignity, and compassion toward a neighbor or a family member to express our regret in not expressing our love and breaking faith with them, a lament for the devastating patterns of human rights violations imposed on non-white peoples, the continuing injustice and the need for reconciliation and mending of relationships. May we have the will to change those relationships, to mend those relationships, and to show love in a better and fuller way. The four remaining candles represent the four main races of the earth. The four colors are also represented in the medicine wheel of the indigenous people and has been used as an alternate co color scheme in the Advent wreath. I'm using them today, symbolically, to remind us of the prejudice, oppression, and racist behaviors in the past and present. As we go through the process of lighting each one and voicing the laments, may it cause us to reflect and be moved towards greater compassion and mending of relationships. The settlement of this part of Canada began in the 1830s. 
By 1840, a vibrant village and trading center of the Ojibwe on the shore of Georgian Bay was replaced by the white settlement named Sydenham. The native settlement was moved away from the prime land near the mouth of the river. And then in 1857, the government moved them again to Cape Croker. While Sydenham became the seat of Gray County and grew as the city to become the city of Owen Sound. Meanwhile, the treaty signed then gave the natives rights to the shore of the Bruce Peninsula, for they were primarily fishermen, trading with others, secondarily game hunters. In 2007, cottagers in Hope Bay had to vacate or remove their cottages as the lease of land ended and the land and possessions were to be the property of the First Nations. The leasing had been done by the Department of Native Affairs. This is just one instance of historical injustice done by our government to our indigenous people. A few years ago, the United Church gave a formal apology to the First Nations people for their role and participation in the Indian residential school system by which the federal government tried to indoctrinate Native children in white culture and teach them English and thus bring about cultural genocide. And there was horrific emotional, verbal, physical, and even sexual abuse. It is a dark part of our history. We live in a land rich in both natural and cultural beauty that existed before the Europeans came. Today we lament that the first European immigrants to Canada could not see the wisdom and richness of the traditions and culture of the first peoples of this land. We lament the assumption that this was an empty land to be occupied by Europeans and that those assumptions destroyed indigenous families and communities. We lament the pain, suffering, and damage that the Indian residential school system caused. We lament the abuses experienced by too many of the students in that setting. And we ask for courage and will to seek reconciliation. We acknowledge with respect their culture and ways of knowing. We recognize our responsibility to live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with its people. We lament that in a country with great abundance, there exists within indigenous communities a scarcity of clean drinking water, decent housing, quality health and family support services, and access to economic and educational opportunities. As I light the red candle in honor of our First Peoples, we ask for courage to stop ongoing injustice and the will to mend relationships. And now I turn our thoughts to the black candle that is representing all peoples of African descent and remind us of the injustice, prejudice, and history of abuse, police brutality, and government rules we have thought about just a couple of weeks ago, as well as what we have faced in the news with Black Lives Matter. We lament racial bigotry and the oppression and segregation of African Americans and Canadians in the past. We lament the ongoing prejudice, unfair treatment by police and the legal system, 
and the lack of economic and educational opportunities. As I light the black candle in honor of African Canadians, we ask for courage to stop the injustice and the will to bring change and reconciliation. May we mend relationships and live with respect and peace and friendship with all people. In 1880, there began a surge of Chinese immigrants that lasted five years. By then, the cheap labor under scary conditions to build the Canadian Pacific Railway was no longer needed. Meanwhile, 15,000 laborers had come from California and China directly. Many would remain here alone. Most could not afford the head tax to send daughters and wives to Canada. There was a special tax just for them, for Chinese immigrants, that actually would last till 1947, when the Chinese Exclusion Act from 1923 that stopped all Chinese immigration also ended. It was only in 2006, the formal apology by the federal government was made and restitution given to four survivors of this racist policy. In 1979, W5, that well-respected documentary program, aired a report stating that foreign Chinese students were taking opportunities from Canadians for university education. However, this report was inaccurate and prejudicial. In fact, it had to, they had to give a public apology for it. But the damage was done, and many in the audience considered the untruths as true. And it caused prejudice. And it caused hatred to be hardened in people's hearts. And there is still that opinion and fear to this day. We lament the prejudice that causes us to shrink away from people that are identifiably different than us. And as I light the yellow candle representing the Asian people, we ask for courage to stop injustice and bigotry and we ask for the will to mend relationships, to live with respect and peace and friendship with all peoples. And now, as we turn our attention to the final candle, the white candle, I remind us that in most conflicts, there is the aggressor, the victim, and the bystander. As a white European male, I am part of that demographic group that has historically held power, been the aggressor and the oppressor. Personally, though, I do know that I've been a victim in the past. But generally, I see myself as the bystander, which does not get me off the hook because if I see some abuse happening and stand idly by, then I am as culpable as the abuser. We can learn something from the states. The craziness of their politics with a former President Trump the scariness of white supremacists and conspiracy theorists and the abuse of power by some of the wealthy for selfish and evil purposes like Jeffrey Epstein and the abuse of underage girls 
We are not isolated from the traffic of minors, the homeless, and the hungry child. And therefore today, as we are lighting the white candle, we lament the abuse of children, the trafficking of minors and women, spousal abuse, homelessness, and poverty. As I light the white candle, we ask for courage and the will to assist those who are weak. In this season of Lent, may we move to mend relationships, to say sorry, even to our neighbor, family member, loved one, to bring about reconciliation with family members, to bring healing to all relationships. May we walk in peace with all peoples. Amen. Let us now sing hymn number 120 from Voices United, O Jesus, I Have Promised, verse 1, 2, and 4. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the journey of our lives with its ups and downs, with its questions and challenges, and with its moments of joy. As we say thank you, we realize there is brokenness in us and in our world. Forgive our selfish acts and our inaction to be a blessing to others. Knowing that we are loved and forgiven, we turn to the world to love it into wholeness. We pray for people living in desert times, facing famine of body or spirit, being tempted away from what is good and just, facing destruction. We pray for healing and wholeness. Lord, we pray for all peoples and leaders, religious, political, and social, for justice, 
fairness, and compassion to aid the homeless and hungry, to work for peace, economic viability, and environmental stability around the world. Help us as a global village to end racism and treatment of inequality, whatever the basis. This we ask in the powerful name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. And now, let us again sing hymn number 420 from Voices United, Go to the World, verse 1, 2, and 3. As we conclude our time of worship, may we hear these words as we go from this place and time. As we travel this Lenten pathway, we journey together, a community of faith and also alone. Let us go into God's world, practicing our faith, to love God above all and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. The blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And now let us hear the postlude played by David. Mm -hmm. 